Okay, in this section, as in all sections, I'm going to start off with the boring background. Well, I, actually, I don't think it's boring. I think it's actually, it's pretty interesting to understand where things used to be so that you can understand the features that you may want to look out for when buying that particular component. Now, we've set up this DVD so that you can press the chapter next button on your DVD remote and you can skip this part if you wish, but don't do that, right? We're going to learn some cool stuff, okay? So, television up until recently was composed of about 30 images that flashed across your big tube television every second in a particularly interesting way. Every 30th of a second or so, a frame would be drawn on your screen, but instead of showing the whole frame, it would just show every other line, which in case of our NTSC system in the States and Canada, was 525 horizontal lines. It started at the top left, and beamed across all the odd lines, then did the same with the even ones. So two half frames are shown interlaced together around 30 times a second to produce a good flowing motion picture. Humans are never able to see that electron beam buzzing across the screen that far, so we just see what we perceive as fluid motion. Now, like I said before, NTSC, or the television standard that we use in the States and also Canada, uses 525 horizontal lines across the screen. You guys in Europe have a different system called PAL, which is, uses 625 lines, but a lower frame rate of 25 frames per second. Anyway, in terms of NTSC, 520 lines accounts for the entire tube, but some of that tube is obscured by the border and some other stuff, ends up being that there are only about 480 lines of viewable screen. That is why standard definition NTSC is called 480i. 480 lines of viewable screen that is interlaced together. The I stands for interlaced. You just learnt your first geek term, 480i. Go ahead and tell your friends, yeah, I used to have 480i, but now it's all 1080p from here on out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all those people that skipped this section, they won't have a, a grip on resolutions like you and me, right? You glad you stayed? Okay. Let's make this very, very practical. You remember the whole thing about digital camera resolutions a few years ago, right? Do you remember that? My camera is a two megapixel. Oh, mine's a four megapixel. Mine's a six megapixel and so on. Now, the more pixels your camera had, the better resolution, the higher the quality picture, particularly if you ever wanted to blow that picture up, right? Well, we are at the same place with TV. A few years ago, the biggest, baddest TV you could get was this 36 inch, like this bad boy here up in our rec room. Only my chiropractor knows how much this sucker weighs. Turns out at this screen size, 480 lines of interlaced TV actually looks pretty good. We watched that resolution for decades and thought it looked awesome. Kind of like most low pixel digital cameras if you only take little four by six prints. But you know what happens, take a low res photo like that and blow it up and this is what happens. <laughs> Don't look so good, right? Well, it turns out the same thing happened with TVs. The TV manufacturers started making TVs bigger and bigger and that NTSC 480i picture started looking kind of raggedy on those bigger screens. It looked fine on the smaller screens that we were used to, not so much on a screen like this. And that's not even thinking about projectors that make a huge image the size of your wall. 480i starts to look very, very pixelated there. So enter high definition. Now, if you look at the advertising in your Sunday paper where they list all the cool big screen TVs, you'll see these phrases over and over again. 720p, 1080i, 1080p. This is kind of the same thing as the bragging rights that all those digital cameras had. Let's look at the current three high-def TV resolutions. 720p stands for the number of horizontal rows of pixels displayed on the screen. The actual resolution is 1280 pixels across by 720 pixels high. The P in 720p stands for progressive, which means just like a movie projector, each frame is shown full frame. The whole screen is drawn rather than just half the lines and then the other half in the case of interlace. Remember in 480i, the screen would just be drawing the odd lines and the even ones and then interlace them together. 720p shows the whole image, every line from top to bottom, and then starts again every 30th of a second. 
1080i has a resolution of 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels down and as you might expect from the I in the term that it's an interlace signal just like our old 480i signal. The image is drawn on the odd lines then the even lines and then interlaced together. 1080p you might imagine has the same pixel count as 1080i that is 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels down but the whole image is displayed as a single frame not the odd lines and then the even ones. So right about now you should probably be asking the question just shut up with all this mumbo jumbo just tell me the best resolution to get. Well 1080p is the best resolution you can get currently at this time but it's also of course the most expensive. It also turns out just like the digital camera analogy we spoke of a little while ago the resolution you need is tied to how big that image is going to be and how close you are going to be looking at it. If you're looking at a 42 inch TV, a typical plasma size, then you're going to need to be less than five or six feet away from the screen to discern the differences between 720 and 1080 resolutions. I don't know many people who sit that close to a TV, do you? Now, however, if you have a big 73 inch monster TV like this guy here and you are seated around eight to 10 feet away, that's when you might start to see the difference. Certainly when you get into projectors that are blowing the image up to wall size proportions you may want to go with the highest resolution you can find or afford. An interesting thing to note is that the shape of TVs have changed with the advent of high definition. TVs used to have an aspect ratio of four units across by three units down so an old TV that was say 12 inches across would be nine inches down that's a ratio of four to three. High def has changed that with a widescreen ratio of 16 units across by 9 units down. You can see that ratio in every screen resolution we have talked about. 1280 divided by 16 multiplied by 9 gives 720 pixels high. 1920 divided by 16 multiplied by 9 gives 1080. Oh, and by the way, don't get caught into thinking that these measurements are somehow tied to the physical size of the TV. No, they're just a measurement of how many pixels are on the screen. Obviously, you could have a smaller TV that has a higher pixel count if those pixels are more densely packed together. The high resolution screen in this instance is actually a smaller TV. Oh, and by the way, the size of a TV is always expressed as the diagonal measurement that is a 42 inch TV is 42 inches diagonally across the screen. Hi, I'm David Wills and the clip you've just seen is just a taste of what you can find in my free mini course that teaches you the seven secrets that can help you save thousands, I mean thousands and thousands of dollars while creating your very own dream home theater. It's a really cool course that drops right into your email inbox with full length high res videos and articles not these fuzzy little video clips that you've just seen. Uh, I've been a technical consultant to superstars like Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Diana Ross and a bunch of others designing and installing video and audio environments and I'd love to just get that same cool information into your hands that can help you build a home theater setup of your dreams within a budget that you can afford. Anyway go to besthometheaterguide.com and sign up for the free mini course and you can get the first full length high res video immediately with accompanying article and I'll send the rest every few days so that you can learn at your own pace. That's besthometheaterguide.com. Sign up and I'll see you in a couple of minutes.